Okay, so this panel was actually supposed to have two people, but then I thought they have, there are people who have flown all over from Scandinavia, and I would want to get their opinion as well uh, on, on, you know, basically the new age learning spaces. So, okay, so now we have a very interesting dynamic uh, right now, you know, sitting here because, uh, Ms. Nackley, you have been an educator in, in um, first Estonia, which is a phenomenally coming up country, and uh, then now Finland, right? Uh, Alan has been there in, in Denmark for a very long time, running a phenomenal school, uh, you know, Orsta Gymnasium in Copenhagen, and he's trying to replicate that in India. So that's a very, very interesting concept. And, and uh, uh, Alan, we have had two sessions, right, where we sat and we discussed, uh, uh, you know, uh, and, and Alan showed me the way he's trying to do this in India, and that was really something, you know. And uh, Ms. Carnifel runs schools in five countries, Six countries, and, uh, and very, very different countries, right? So you have India, you have Saudi Arabia, you have, uh, uh, you know, UK, which is very, very strict and stringent with the way they do things. And uh, then we, we have Ms. Aparna Maggi, who uh, basically, uh, you, you're running a school which, uh, which is trying to, you know, break a lot of shackles uh, in, in the space that they are in. So the first question, uh, you know, I would like to ask you is, do you think the, the there is something wrong with the current school structure? And if, if it's wrong, then what is the biggest wrong that we have today, right? You could also say it's right, so that's up to you. That's a big question. Um, I think for me, the, the current structures of school are still based on this industrialized state. So I think one of the things we need to remove or figure out how to remove is scheduling. Uh, bell systems, classrooms, and this movement from place to place that's happening during the day. So this is something that we're, we're trying to wrap our heads around in a school. We're an IB school, has certain requirements for hours and learning and these things. So for us, we're wondering how do we break the current model by removing scheduling? Because scheduling has put us in this lockstep pattern of playing school. So this, to me, is a, a huge barrier. And I don't know the answers yet, but we're looking at it. Yeah, the problem with uh, the school structure everywhere in the world is that it, it doesn't match uh, the needs for the world we live in today and uh, to a less degree in the world we will live in in, in the future. And I think we must leave the concept, com conception of the school as a building. Uh, I will see the school more as a learning hub that facilitates learning in different environments, within the school, outside the school. I think there are, there are two things that are very necessary today. One is the personalization of learning to accept that Kids learn in different ways, in different tempos, and have different passions. They shouldn't learn the same stuff. They should learn what they are passionate about. And the other thing is connected to that, and that is that the school is not connected to the world outside the school. I think what we must do in the modern world is to develop new citizens that are involved in changing the world. I mean, uh, we have the climate change, we have immigration challenges, we have problems in uh, governing states. There are so many urgent problems, and we need to change the curriculum in a way so students become engaged in changing the world. And the school structure nowadays very often prevents students from learning and prevents them from engaging in the outside world. So definitely we need to change school and education. Well, I'm going to talk a bit more about this in the next session, but if I am to pick one issue um, that I see globally, uh, that prevents innovation in school is regulation. Um, so that's uh, my general 
a thing that I, I tell politicians and uh, administrators that um, trust the professionals in the schools to, um, to deliver high quality education. Why regulate um, this sizes of classrooms, for example? Um, when we uh, created our spaces in, in our schools in Sweden, we used the same architect for all of those schools. And uh, his mission was to create something different from a traditional school. And, and he always said that school started with a man sitting under a tree. You don't need a building at all. Uh, a building is restricting us. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, when I think of a school, a school structure, I think I'll again think of it as a system which has got a hardware and a software. And when we talk about the hardware of a school, we can say the building, the structure, and the other things that we have, whether it's a tinkering lab or it's a virtual reality lab, so many new things are coming. But what matters most is software of the school, and I would any day say that the backbone of any school system is the teacher. And the need of the today is this, that we are working so much in giving, so we're bringing so much of advancement in the ways of teaching and getting, um, uh, uh, setting up digital footprints. We are talking about virtual reality labs, the tinkering lab which we heard about. But are we training our teachers to operate them properly, to make the children understand them? At the end of the day, I see in any education system, teacher is the god. I still remember my son, I'm basically a mathematics teacher. And I remember when he was in grade three and there was something about addition, about adding vertically and horizontally and that thing was there. I said, this is also correct and that is also correct. You vote over you. But no, I was totally wrong. He kept on telling me, no, my teacher has said this, so it has to be this particular method which is right and I am wrong. Though he knows that I'm teaching uh, mathematics and I might tell him a correct thing also, but no. So if we want to do anything with this generation, the teachers have to walk two steps ahead of the children. Without that, no change is going to come. We might bring in any changes in the structure. We might bring any, all the new dimensions to the education technically. But we have to train our teachers also technically. And the technical education, digital education, and this blending of learning, which is coming in, like face-to-face -face teaching, uh, learning, and online learning. There's a blend of this has to come. And for this, the teachers have to be future ready. We need to work with the teachers. That's what I believe in. OK, so uh, the next one is, is that you know, whenever uh, learning spaces are created, whenever structures are made, uh, when policies are made, every voice is heard. Uh, the, the school management is heard, the teacher community is heard. The students are never given a powerful voice, right? So do you think going forward, would it make sense to give students that kind of uh, you know, power where they also have repre representation and, and they also sit on that panel and say, this is what we are looking for, right? And if, if that's the... Do, do you think that that's going to actually bring out a better uh, learning structure in, in, in learning spaces? Uh, we're doing it right now, actually, where we're, we're bringing the student voice into um, what's happening in our school. So some of the, the slides I showed of some of the spaces we're creating, some of that information came from students. And now that they're experiencing it, we're asking for them to, to give feedback. So what we decided to do is to move with our changes in our renovation in, in very um, careful steps. So we've tried various different things, and now we understand which pieces really work, which pieces resonate, and which need improvement. One of the um, study stops you saw in the hallway of my school, the students said, where, where are the plugs? And I was like, you're absolutely right. They need their plugs to, you know, to, um, to, you know, for their laptops and, and these sorts of devices. They understood this initially, like, yes, so we're going to put those in, we'll get that done. Um, but we're looking to them for how we, how we move forward. And uh, the kids know, you know, like I said, the, the kids know what feels good. Why wouldn't they be involved in that discussion? And uh, I think, as one of the panelists mentioned, that you know, if you have a, a system where um, every school is regulated, you need 50 square meters of a classroom space, and these sorts of regulations, and 17 chairs that face a whiteboard, all these things are going to limit our, our uh, movement. Finding ways that learning spills out that, you know, like the, as said before, the building is not limiting 
the learning. But yes, the students need to be involved. They understand this way better than we do. They understand the technology better than we do. What feels good for them? Let's ask. <clears throat> Uh, my school in Copenhagen was a member of the uh, Ashoka Changemaker Network. And one of our important projects in, uh, in that network was to create a changemaker group of students. So we educated student leaders. We had three class representatives in every class, one, one as a member of student council, the other responsible for the learning environment, and the third responsible for the emotional climate in, in the class. And uh, they had a say in the development of the school, but also in the classroom, and they took initiatives uh, if there were cases of uh, mobbing and things like that. So we educated them, them to be active and to act. Um, and some teachers were not so happy with that because Suddenly, we had a very strong force on the school that had ideas about how to develop and had power to make the ideas a reality. Um, but there's no way out of involving students in how uh, schools should function because I think one result of an unconference like this is that we don't really know the future of education. We are trying a lot of things and we have a lot of fine ideas, but we have to involve students in, in deciding which direction a school should take. So getting students on board, and I agree with you about the teachers, that's the future for every school. Then every school can find their own solution for what's 21st century learning. I mean, I, I definitely agree. Um, the school is the workplace for students and for teachers. And uh, we talked uh, previously about the mindset. And I think it's important that the school environment is pleasant. It's a place for learning. It should also be a place that's safe. And uh, in many of the countries where we're in, there are problems in schools with bullying, for example. And I think something that we strive for is to avoid corridors. Nothing good ever happens in corridors. It's waste of space. Uh, and I think that we should always try to involve students in what kind of spaces are valuable for them. Um, and also that there are different types of spaces for different activities, different types of students. They need different things. I think it was interesting to see what you've been doing, Kathleen, with the different uh, you know, spaces to um, crawl up and read a book, etc., and, and to find those various um, uh, places for students. I think for this topic, the best example we saw just uh, in the previous session with Mr. Arunab getting the children here, and the questions that the children have put up, the way they were answering, the positivity, the confidence that we saw in the children today, definitely they will guide us in a way. We have to come down to that level that we think that they are at par with us. And there are so many things, because this world is such a digital work and techno pedagogy that we were talking about is actually here. And if we give these children a chance and we just understand their psyche a, a bit better and give them a chance to speak and get, in, get on that particular friendly course with them, definitely they're going to lead us correctly in the way that we should be going and teaching them. And then we can definitely teach them better and make them better citizens for tomorrow. That, that was really very interesting and insightful. Uh, with this, I think, you know, I just want to do something very interesting. Um, and again, led by the vision of Arunab, sir, uh, I will use the students as well. Uh, so the thing is, we'll let three students come up to us and tell them what is the thing that they dislike the most in school today, right? And we'll see if th there's a lot of, you know, school leaders here, and we'll see the reaction, and we'll see whether you think the same as well, right? So three students who, would want, yes, please. And there we, now we have two. Do we have a third person? OK, yes, please. So Hemant is in ninth grade, and he interns with us right now. So uh, yeah, come on.
stand here, right? And uh, today, what do you like, dislike the most? Good evening, uh, good morning everyone. I'm Hemant of 9th class from Sri Rama Rural Academy. Now I'm here to tell you about what is the most, uh, dis what thing I most dislike in the school is uh, having more study hours. How many hours do you think you should st study? How many hours do you study now? And how many hours do, do you want to study? Uh, a four hour study is enough if we listen well in the class. That we'll, we'll pick on that point. Yes, please. Good morning, everyone. My name is Sanchita, and I'm from BGS National Public School. I just want to say, like, in classes and all, we'll be asked to study math, social, but in practical life, we don't have any use of it. Like, no one in your, like, when you grow old, no one will ask you what are the policies of Nazism. No one will ask you why uh, Hitler didn't do good for Germany or whatever. So why are we learning those things right now? That's fair enough. Um, good morning, everybody. Uh, myself is Shanvi, and I'm from BG's NPs again. Uh, so something that I don't like in schools, um, I wouldn't want to say don't like, because uh, every school has its own way of working. But um, I would just want to say that I think the teachers we have, I think we have great teachers, uh, really learned and experienced teachers. But I would want to say that uh, our schools should learn to move on with time. They should, um, uh, so our school is around 20 years old, 20, 10 years old, and uh, we're living the same way we were. We need to move forward with time. We need to know what is, um, we need to change our rules. Like, um, uh, you know, UN, I think that's uh, not very powerful now, and once more the, uh, our prime minister said that UN uh, should change its rules to, uh, because the world is changing at a very fast rate, and I think our school should move on with time, should become uh, more chhoot dehni chahiye types. So the element is that less things like policies, constitution, uh, United Nations, schools, everything should move forward. I mean, that's what she meant. Okay, so three very interesting questions, and I'll uh, let any one of you who wants to tackle this uh, take it up. So the first one was about study hours, right? The way, like today the study is structured, students don't want to do it, and, and that's a fact, right? So do we either reduce that, keeping it the same way, or do we actually try and, you know, like re, it's like re invent is the wrong word, but do something else with it, you know, so that maybe they start enjoying the study hours, right? So what, what do you think is the way forward for that child to actually really either enjoy the study hours or study for a lesser number of hours? Well, I'll, I'll connect uh, the two of the questions of, um, of the two, uh, of the, the study hours and uh, the young lady who spoke about, um, sh she didn't see the meaning of some of the work that she's doing. I, I think for us to move forward with the future of learning and having true learning experience, we must focus on the purpose and meaning of any learning. If the student has not connected in a way that um, they themselves have that understanding as why this is important, why this is uh, transformational, then we have we've created a scenario where the, the chances of deep learning have been minimized. Number of hours students will dedicate to any project, any idea, is often based on their own, their own passion and their own heart when it comes to work. If you, if you are creating scenarios where students have projects, and pur purposeful and meaningful learning to them. They, they will go about and do the learning. You don't have to set the hours of 45 minutes or say, do 30 minutes of homework tonight because they'll be pursuing it on their own, their own initiative. We did a, 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 a lesson, um, a, a, a powerful question that we, we started a unit with in our school for our uh, uh, eighth grade class was, why, why do we turn away? And, and this question is about how we, um, as privileged people, um, turn away from the world's problems and turn away from those who might need us. And through the exploration of reading, of making plays, of working with a refugee center, and doing multiple things where this was a purposeful and meaningful question to themselves, and asking themselves, am I doing this? The students were 
incredibly engaged. And this project that we were, we were working on with this essential question was supposed to be six weeks. But because of the students' enthusiasm and the teachers' enthusiasm, it's going to go for another probably four or five weeks. Because the question has me is meaningful. It's meaningful to the student. The number of hours are, are, are um, it doesn't matter. They want to work on it. They want to be part of it. They want to learn more. They want to express themselves on this topic. Um, what happens in many schools is that we have this idea of how many hours it takes to learn anything. But again, this is this old structure that has to be cast aside, I believe. Um, and if, if we're leading with purpose and meaning, then their lives change. They are transformed in their learning. And this is what we want for our children, right? To be transformed in their learning, to become global leaders and do wonderful things. Let's stop worrying about content. Let's work, worry about transformation. Yeah, I just want to uh, tell a, a little uh, anecdote just to uh, continue what we, you have been saying. I, I was visiting uh, High Tech High Inside San Diego and um, I was in a, a physics class and they were working on a project where they were making comic books um, about superheroes and they had to do all the math and the physics to to make realistic superheroes with real powers. And the students begged their teachers to be allowed to make a bigger comic book than he thought they could do within the hours they had at their disposal. Yes, they said, we have 14 nights, we can do everything, we can work 14 hours a day, more than that. But he said, no, that's not realistic, you have to cut down. But they were so engaged in their superhero project that they just wanted to work. And I think the important thing to emphasize to the students also today is that there's a need for more learning, not less learning in the world. You have to be much more clever than we are because the problems in the world are so big. The challenges for your generation will be so huge. So. Don't talk so much about hours, talk about the amount of wisdom you have to gather. And of course, I know why you talk about hours, because homework is so boring, and uh, school should make other kinds of homework for you. But you have to be ambitious and have to learn a lot, because that's needed. Those were really very good questions and very often I think this is the common question you find anywhere from students. The same thing about study R and why do we need to read about Hitler and what he did. So the uh, thing that we need to do is this study R's and the type of bookish knowledge that we give, we need to convert it to more of project based teaching. And a project based learning has to come in place of it. And these study R's, I think we can make it more interactive. And they realize it's not that they're going to read a book and they have, uh, they have to prepare something. We can make it more interesting. And first, make them interested in what we are doing. So then those study hours won't be the study hours. Like I'll tell you a very simple thing that um, uh, I have two sons, two grown-up sons. And as, as they were growing, I actually thought that I've learned maximum from them. Let me be very honest, is they have taught me so much about today's world. I'm a very good PUBG player. I do not, uh, and I love spending time doing that with them. And the same thing I do with my students also. And I openly play with them and discuss. So what I do, and, uh, and I'm, I'm, I'm into all type of games which children play these days. It happens when you're a mother to two grown-up sons. So I'm a very good FIFA player. And uh, I love playing that game with them. And I discuss this with my students. So when I go enter a class and I just uh, uh, read, I still love teaching. As a principal, I still teach mathematics to my ninth class and my twelfth class. So when I enter a classroom, I know at what level I have to deal with ninth class. So I see that they are not interested, then I start discussing, okay, wh which level they are in PUBG, right? And what are the new things coming up, and uh, what is the new technique that I've learned about FIFA? What is the new thing that I've learned? And you see the minutes, the excitement, and all the boring faces turning into so, so excited, and then meaningfully I convert it into a lesson. And uh, somehow we end up studying well. And we end up doing the exercise that we were supposed to do, and all of them enjoying it rather, and then going on that uh, we, the, the time finishes, we don't even realize. So I think this is the time for these particular things, and this is what the teachers um, uh, have to become now, friends. 
friends and making the studies very very interesting and as i told you that this is a time for blend, uh, blended learning and uh, to our textbooks we have to uh, add uh, uh, we have to make uh, sure that we give positive uh, digital footprints to our children how we how we uh, do online and by our uh, behavior good behavior on online we can make things interesting for our children and make them interested in studies which we want them to do so we have to come to the level to do that we do that with them and then we ask them to do what we want them to do so it's going to be a good uh, share and care thing which will go on with the studies that, that's very very interesting uh, okay so um, uh, we'll uh, you know for uh, i cannot see the time board <laughs> yeah timing, right? yes so uh, that's the the irony here <laughs> All right. So uh, one, uh, you know, uh, very. Uh, so we we asked our kids in the last year's uh, second round Olympiad test, uh, if you could make a new school, right? What all would you do differently, right? So a lot of answers came, like convertible sunroofs, uh, you know, conveyor belts so that the homework moves or whatever it is, like Tiffin moves. Uh, I don't have to move around for that. Uh, let's replace the teacher with a robot, which is how. You know, angsty they get when when there's a, a, a you know stru structured teacher in, in the classroom. Uh, so there were a lot of thoughts that came out. You know, uh, so of course you are not students, but if you had to do three things like completely new in in a school, you know, uh, what would those three things be? You can take, you can take some time and then. Okay, uh, three things. Um, I would say at the moment I'm trying to attempt. These, these things, because the, the, the things that are always important to me um, is, is first to create this world of compassion in, in a school, truly create this. This is something where the bullying doesn't happen or, the, or the, um, that students don't feel accepted. I have 40 plus nationalities in my school. Most of my students only stay for two years and, and then they, they move on. Uh, and so I have very little time, but I have to find an, an immediate way for them to feel connected to the people around them and to feel, feel good. So uh, the magic formula I'm trying to find is how to create this warm, caring, compassionate school. Um, I, want, I want to create a school in which um, we, can, we can leave the old paradigm behind for sure. And that, that means... Um, that means negating much of the learning we've already had. And, and that's really hard for us. The, the one speaker said there were hard-boiled eggs. I love that. And, and I have to ask myself, have I become a hard-boiled egg? Uh, that's a really difficult question um, to have to face. Um, and so I, I think I have to change myself, right? So I, I have to help find that wonderful world. I have to know, be ready to, to crush that hard-boiled egg and maybe make a fresh egg. Um, and I, I have to find a way that is really meeting the needs of what the kids need today. So these are things I'm working on. I don't know if I have the answers yet. I'm trying um, at the best I can and the, as fast as I can. That's precisely the questions that uh, I'm working with right now because I'm planning a new school and uh, so I have the opportunity opportunity to think through what would I do different from all the other schools that I have been uh, heading in in Denmark. And I think the most important thing for me would be to have uh, less classroom teaching and much more project-based learning with projects that is that are engaging for the students and are important for the students and the society they live in. Um, and I want, as part of the project, to have less teaching in school and more teaching outside the school. And I think we have a problem here in India because India is obsessed with security. Um, so you can't even go outside the school without uh, guards and things like that. Coming from Scandinavia, it's a very strange thing. And I think it's so important to have teaching outside the school. So therefore, we plan a school with too little space because we want 20% of the teaching to take place outside the school. Um, that's one thing, but a very big thing. The next thing is that I think 
and I think it's especially important in, in India to have a more multi-dimensional focus on the student that we are developing. Uh, there's a lot of focus on the academics here in India, and I can understand that, but I think even to be a good academician, you have to be a whole person. So developing the individual, individuality of the student, the empathy of the student, uh, I think those uh, I want qualities in, in a student are so important, and I think it's important to have it as a part of the curriculum, not only as something that we talk about when we present ourselves on web pages. So an integration between the academic goals and the personal and social goals. Uh, I would work much more meth methodologically with that in, in my new school. Yeah. That's only two things, but they are very big. had something on my tongue and now it, it, uh, it disappeared. Um, but if I could, we're doing things differently today, but if, if there is one thing I would increase in doing more, uh, would be uh, um, even more professional development of teachers, especially in the areas of, of digitalization, because uh, I mean, the, the kids are digital natives, and in order for us to keep up, I think there is where I would put more focus. The first thing which comes to my mind, which basically I always try and do and I'm trying to do, is a happy school where children should be very happy. It's a second home. And I want that when the bell rings in the morning, all my children should come running to school and wanting to be there. And when the bell rings for them to go home, they are not so happy that they have to go home. So that's a school that I want for my children. And when we do this with children, I want a school. Uh, if I can change, I, I am trying to change it, and let's see if we can do. An environment, I was looking at the school, what Kathleen, ma'am, you were showing there, and I think the number of children in the schools there is less, come in the class is less than what we have. The situation is very different in our country. And giving such facilities to our children is not very easy for us, looking at the number of children we have in a class. So how can we innovate and uh, be creative and innovative that in a budgeted situation, we can create such happy atmosphere of uh, children feeling very secure and confident and uh, learning things in a beautiful manner with the things that we saw um, there and the one with your son making that big bubble and things like that. That technology we can get for our children here. And so that is something we need to work on. Okay. And the other thing is that, yes, we need to work hand in hand with them. And a human connect is what we need to teach them. And value, uh, these days, values and ethics are such used words. But just let's get to the deep-rooted meaning that they have and build a school on values and ethics, which we can give to our children. I'm sure they're going to do good tomorrow. That's what I feel. Thank you. Well, that, of course, we have also exceeded time. Uh, that's something I shouldn't have done. But uh, I was just busy lis listening because uh, so the day I have some money, I'll probably make a school putting all the thoughts together. You know, so that, that, that is what I was thinking of. But thank you so much. Uh, it was very, very interesting because uh, we got very different perspectives, you know, and, and, and multiple countries being represented when we are actually thinking of uh, new age learning spaces.